Blue Lake Cat Podcast Special guest My guy Fat Nick is in here Yo, Welcome up? welcome Fat Nick A.K. Nicky Gordo Thanks for having me Appreciate it I saw you say uh, You go through your Hemothy Just just that whole spiel That I saw on social media Because I thought it was hilarious Your oh, mom should have named you Hemothy You are him I'm him Hemothy Him Duncan Him Duncan um, Him Jong Un Him Jong Un That's a good one Oh, that's a heater. I was with uh, Clint Sparks three days ago, and he made one. Hemi Levine. Hemi Le- Levine? Hemi Levine? Yeah. Like, Hemi Ivine. My bad. I Hemi Ivine. Hemi Ivine. Yeah. That's a good one. I like that. All right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he is here. What you been up to, man? Nothing. Just in LA. Bullshitting. Um, first of all, congratulations, because from my understanding, you're, you're sober now, right? Yeah. Two and a half years. Two and a half years sober. Um, and for a long time, that was kind of like a part of your whole thing was you were a fucking maniac with the drugs. Oh, yeah, I was bad. Like the drugs and the lean. Yeah, like literally like my whole like. It was like your persona. Yeah, yeah, it was like it was like uh, your social media. You'd be having cake shaped as lean bar, all kinds of Xanax cakes. <laughs> and it was a wild. Uh, I mean, it was like crazy because like I felt like that was as much as like your allure was some of the outlandish shit you were posting on social media in like 2017 and yeah. 18. Like what made you want to get get your shit together? Dude, honestly, after Peep died, I was still on drugs. So I'm not going to lie. Because you were really close with Peep. For yeah, people that's who one don't of my know. best friends. Yeah, we yeah. were on tour together yeah. like from the beginning, everything. But I think once after he died, I was still on drugs. But like maybe like a year and some change after, I was like, oh shit. Like bro died. People are dying. Like I realistically i can't be on drugs my whole life like one day you're gonna quit or you're gonna die and that's it like you have to quit one day yeah so i'm like why not quit now while i'm younger rather than waiting digging myself deeper and quitting later Mm. was it how hard was it man it was bad withdrawals and all that my mental withdrawals were worth my physical withdrawals because my physical withdrawals lasted like what maybe like a little over a month you know Mm. like puking when you shit yourself you can't eat you can't sleep you're sweating you can't do this but the mental lasted you know what i mean and I still think like my shit's wired different, not in a bad way. Just when you like, say mentally, what do you mean, like, like just like thoughts or like your anxiety or like your depression states or just like overthinking, just all that shit. You know what I mean like you just like mm. scrambled now. My shit's already scrambled. My shit's like fuck. Yeah, like what? What at the time? Like, let's say your peak drug use. What all were you putting into your body, man? Dude, honestly, I was probably drinking maybe like a four a day, which I don't think is shit. Like, I think we lean is the weakest opiate. But then I was taking, like, maybe, like, four to six or four to five blues a day. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So you were, like, uh, I mean, that's, like, a, 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 a interesting state to just move around in all day. Yeah, I mean, thank God, like, at least for me, I wasn't just, like, those people that you see just nodding out. Like, I was actually getting shit done. Yeah, because you see those people, you're like, oh. Yeah, and I mean, just hit me different. You know I mean, like, yeah, like, if I'm tired, I'm going to sleep and shit, but I can, like, still function and go about my day. You ever have, a like, a scary moment where you thought you maybe did too much or there was, like, a oh, moment? Oh, dude, there was one day I was in my house, like, um, in my old house when I was still on drugs. I was drinking lean and I was popping blues, and I don't know what the hell, I don't know what the hell happened. I think I maybe popped one too many, and then my vision was, like, closing on me and like everything started warping and i literally had to go force myself to throw up oh, but like shit. weird i've never felt like that so i don't think i was overdosed i don't know what the hell it was but That's like the craziest yeah like my vision like started like tripping out like cl- like my, i saw my eyes just like clothing i was like oh dude i'm about to black out you know it's crazy because like uh i mean as much drugs as you've done do you, it seems to be uh you, you dodged getting that fentanyl batch you know what i think fentanyl started way more when i stopped when I stopped, it was started to hike. Yeah, because right now it's like at its peak. Yeah, when I was doing drugs, it wasn't that bad, like at all. Like I, I can barely name people who OD'd on fat. Right, 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 right. Yeah, no, the fentanyl shit now is like it's like Russian roulette every time. Even co- the cocaine. The, the, the crazy is the cocaine is like laced with that shit. Yeah, it's like, it is insane. Yeah, I heard. I don't know if this is true, but I posted something about uh, burner was. I had burner on the show, and he had said something about like laying off all the drugs because of fentanyl. There's people in the comments saying that there's laced f- weed now with fentanyl, and I'm like, what that. the fuck? The fuck is going on here? I don't, I don't know. That doesn't that. even make sense. Yeah, that's like I don't like you don't need to cut weed. You get me? That's what I'm saying. That's why I don't understand. I'm like, like a seven of weed. There was like seven right people. Yo, man, do you tell him that weed is cut with fentanyl? I'm like, how does that make sense? I don't make it make sense. I don't get it. You yeah, know, because you're cutting your white right to make it stronger, way more. You're stretch more. Yeah. yeah, but. 
I don't even like a seven a weed, so seven a weed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I don't think so. So, um, did you find like when you got sober, you had to get rid of certain friends or certain people in your circle? Um, no, I don't think so because I think I was very smart in choosing who I surround myself with. Yeah, you know I mean, like I can really name who's my friends and who's my acquaintances. Right. But it definitely helped me to tell them like, yo, like you gotta get off this shit or mm. like tone it down a bit. Mm. Like yeah. I still got friends that are on drugs. Yeah, hundred percent. They're on their bullshit, but like they definitely toned down than what they were. Cause I'm sure like at a certain point in time, your fans probably also had to be like leaving comments like, bro, chill out. Like, yeah, they would say chill and shit, especially once the, the fat epidemic started. Yeah. But yeah, I've been clean. I, I haven't touched pills or lean in like two, over two and a half years. I don't yeah. even smoke weed anymore. Bro, congrats. Yeah, don't even smoke weed. I, can't. I get panic attacks. Like back in the day, I can smoke ass. Now I smoke panic attack. Panic attack. Crazy. Congratulations, Thank man. You. That's I vape. You do some vaping, a little, lot, little bit yeah. of that liquid tobacco. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you blow them circles. You see on YouTube, there's the fucking, these guys in fucking Fox racing shirts and cargo shorts. They blow these huge ass fucking yeah, I, circles. I, I got the big bro chacho mod. Oh, hey man, you'll take it, right? <laughs> that shit won't, I mean, it'll kill you slowly, but it ain't gonna, yeah. yeah. Everything's gonna kill you. Everything's gonna kill you, man. That's dope, man. Well, shit, are you, do you, were you ever a big drinker of alcohol? Dude, I've never been drunk in my life. I've been tipsy, right? right. Like, I've never drank, but now I'll go out and I'll like social drink. You know mm. what I mean? Like, I'll have a oh, shot. That's great. Shot, yeah, yeah. I won't get drunk or anything. Dude, congrats, man. That's a hard thing to shake, especially when like you have a persona that's known for so much of that. Did you find it hard to like kind of have an identity in the music shit that wasn't being the big dude with drugs and guns? Now you're just the big dude with guns. Big dude with guns. I mean, no, I mean, definitely. I, I think that's what like definitely brought a lot of attention. Right, because it was like, like I said, when when SoundCloud started, right, I feel like that brought a lot of attention because it was a whole different era of rap mm. and a whole different era of everything. Because back in the day, it was like club music, you got to look a certain way, you got to do this, and then boom, SoundCloud opened, and then there's like a thousand different characters, right? So I do think that helped it, and not just that, but the drug gun was definitely like a wow factor. You were a part of the era of uh, hip hop that I like to call the dark age. <laughs> I always refer to this age of like 2017, 2018, where a lot of shit, and I'm, you and Puya, I, I always have been a fan of you and Puya's music. Uh, I think Puya, like a rap is, I mean, he's fucking incredible. But you guys are a part of an era of music that I do feel like was fueled a lot by antics on Inst. And I'm not saying you in particular, no, yeah. but you know what I mean. Like, I think of Lil Pump, and I think a lot of these guys who literally kind of came out of that era of music. And a lot of it was more based on what they were doing on their social media. Not to say Pump wasn't doing numbers or, but there was some guy, like, what's that guy's name who said he was a clone? Damn. I know exactly what you're talking about. But I, oh, Kid Boo. Kid, Kid Boo, right? Is a perfect example, right? Like, his music wasn't very good. His entire spiel was this wild shit he was doing on his Instagram page, and he got signed to a major label. Like, I think Island or somebody actually gave him a record contract, yeah. right? And I just think of like those kind of guys where it's like, that was the era of hip hop. Like, and you were doing your thing prior to that. You know, like I said, I, I lived in Florida when you and Puyo were coming up. Y'all had a lit as fuck. Yeah. But once that shit kind of hit the mainstream, I say 2017, 2018, man, it was so much bullshit getting pushed. But there's people like, I, I don't know, bro. Right. I think I might've met him one time. So it seems no, like I've cool met him. Dude. He's a nice guy. But there's people like SoundCloud got very oversaturated. Right. Mm hmm. And there's people like that who maybe blew up, but doesn't have a cult following. And then they just like, can't really do much after. But then you have people like Puya or Pump or Suicide Boys, right? Who have a following. A and the, well, also the music. Yeah, and the music too. And you have a cult following. You can go sell out shows. You can go sell out merch. You can go do this. You get me? So I definitely think it's like a, there, there's a lot of clutter in it, but the ones that made it, like, you can definitely... No, I think about. Suicide Boy is a great example, right? They're 100%. still going crazy. You Bro, guys they're, are still they're going crazy. Sh dude, they're on tour right now. They're oh, like 7,000, 8,000 no. people a night. No, uh, for sure. I don't want to discount everybody from that era. I just know that, like, like you even mentioned Little Pump. Yeah. Pump, at, the, at a certain time, was, like, the hottest rapper in the world. Yeah. But I do feel like he fucked up where he wasn't focusing as much as making great music as, as he was focusing on antics and a bunch of other shit and... It just, I like it, like we saw it with our own eyes, like his shit just starts to go like down and it was like, and he was like doing a bunch of desperate shit on Instagram, I felt like for like likes and shit. And I was like, <laughs> bro, like 
Just put out some fucking good music. Because Pump had great records. So. Right, he, he's good. I, I, I fuck with him. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know. <laughs> no, I do agree with you. I think he was like harder at one point, right? But I just think, and then, I, then you would see him like grasping at like, just what wild shit can I do on my IG, whether it was his nails or do the Trump shit. It was just a lot of fucking, but like you said, there were, there are people who from that era cut through who are real fan bases Yeah. who, and I think you guys are that like suicide boy is a great example. You know what I mean? So, but I do, I do feel like, I mean, not no offense. You guys are from the worst era of hip hop. <laughs> um, all right. I'm be honest. It's like rock music, right? You have rock and then you have branches. You have, punk you have metal you have this you have that you have gent and then you have hip-hop which is like the soul root but then you have trap you have rap you have this you have this you have this i don't make hip-hop music i think you are uh, i think you make rap music then it's good yeah it's like rap music so i don't think it's the i don't think it's the worst i'm not saying you guys i'm yeah. saying that just the era of like everything that came out dude i think supreme patty might have got a record deal in 2018 i, I, I think so. he did like this is what i'm talking about like if you had gone viral on academics enough, like these stupid ass fucking labels were just handing anyone a fucking check. Oh, but that's just labels trying to make a bag and seeing but what you hits. Know, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, like that whole, that's why I call it the dark era. Cause it was like, it, for a, a solid two years, it, most of what it was about wasn't the music. And now it's always, not always about the music, but I feel like in that, you know, two, three year span, it was, it was rough. Cause I'd have people coming up to the show. I'd be like, God, do I, what is going? Listen, no disrespect to Kid Boo, because I don't want to keep coming back to Kid Boo. <laughs> but that was one where I was like, me and Head interviewed him, and like he started tagging up his shoe in the middle of the, his Gucci shoe, and he put it on his head, and I was like, Oh, this is what we're doing. Okay, so all right, the music's not very good. Uh, I'm, all right, well, yeah, you're a clone. Okay, I <laughs> know yeah. uh, that's like like in that situation, that's just like reaching for you. I mean. So you can't you can't be corny. With there was it, a yeah. lot of that shit though. Yeah. I'm not saying it was it was. I mean, and, and like I said, like you said, man, like a good example. Like right now, Suicide Boys are on tour, killing it. Um, and there was like people out of that era that were like, Puya, you know, um, Shake Shake's dope. Uh, you know, Germ was dope. Like there were some dope dudes, but like I said, like I just think that when I think of like the rappers that came out of that era, I just think it's the worst ever. Um, I, I can go back and forth. I do. Okay. There's more shitty ones than good ones. That's what I, I agree mean. with. That's that, what I mean. 100%. Okay. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. And I'm not saying you're a part of the shitty oh, ones. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you're a part of the dark ages. <laughs> I do think though that it did, when the generation started, it was very influential. To, like For sure. Like, Chief Keef, I don't think he gives enough, gets enough flowers. Oh, of course. Chief Keef's like probably one of them. I mean, listen, everyone we interviewed who's... Uh, maybe 25 and under that's usually who they name as their influence yeah i think he created a whole not created but influenced a whole genre for sure no chief keeps probably top five most influential rapper ever 100 and there's a bunch of 40 year old white dudes with fucking camouflage pants and timberlands on right now they're like fuck that it's not <laughs> real rap bro but no, you're right. Nah, Chief, and I, and I don't put Chief Keef in that, you know, but nah, I think the whole SoundCloud era in general, like the cream of the crop influenced a whole era of yeah. music. Like think about X, right? Like X started off on SoundCloud. X started off with his music not being mixed and mastered and it was over modulating and it was hard to listen to in the car because it would like break your speaker. But kids love that. He's like my son's Tupac. You know what I'm saying? And he influenced so much of what's going on. He influenced Juice World, who's kind of a branch from like the X world. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, no. Nah, I think the SoundCloud shit, like with anything, like there was positives and negatives and, you know, but it was just a goofy ass time in music where these labels were tr trying to find who. It's a very different time that's never been seen before. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And so I, when, I feel like when labels saw it, they're like, holy shit. Let's sign everyone. everyone. Everyone's fucking popping. Well, everyone was trying to find the, uh, the, uh, their little pump. Yeah. So they're going to sign 15 people, and out of that 15, one's going to pop. One of them makes it. And that yeah. one's going to recoup for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's real. That's real. Did you ever, because um, you never signed to a major, right? You stayed independent this whole time. Yeah. I'm sure everyone was trying to sign you. I mean, yeah, I've had interv uh, not interviews. I had uh, meetings. meetings with a bunch of people, but it's like, I don't think it's worth it. Yeah. You, I, it, what what was um for you? Why why did you and Puya kind of make that decision to stay indie? So when you first started making music, right? 
it started popping off, right? And obviously, you monetize it on TuneCore Distro, whatever right. you want to do, kid, right? All that, yeah. yeah, all that shit. We started making money here. We went on tour. We literally called cities all around the country mm-hmm. and booked venues ourselves. Like, we'd book the venue. No booking agent. No booking agent. This is when we first started. Book the venue, whatever they wanted, boom, sell it out, make the money. So when we got off tour, we're like, yeah, we're making money. Like, real money. Our streams are kicking in. We just made X amount on tour, and we made X amount selling merchandise on tour. So when we would go to meetings and they would want X percentage, we'd be like, why are we going to give you a percentage to not guarantee it? Because the label can't guarantee you shit. They can't guarantee you anything. They can promise you, but it's not, that's not a guarantee. The only thing they can guarantee you is the amount of money they give you up front, and that is the back door for them to fuck you in the ass. Yeah, so it's like, so I'm going to take that. Hopefully, you can do something for me, but I still got to recoup that, and you're still going to take like 50 or 60%. Yeah, it's trash. Which is insane. So I'm like, we're good. Like, I know how much money I can do merchandise. I know how much I get per show, and how much I get streaming. So I don't really need you unless you come up with something crazy that makes sense for me. Yeah. Like, I agree with, like, distribution deals and stuff. That's cool. Yeah, of JVs course. are cool, like, yeah. if it's in your favor and stuff. Uh, Yeah, no, nah, I think that you guys had the right hey, i think the worst thing people do is sign too early or sign at all sometimes yeah and i realized it during covid because i follow artists right and right. they're complaining about their deals or oh yeah because the fucking live money dried up and they're not seeing any actual money from their music because they shows. haven't recouped yet yeah so it's like that's a main key reason and they blew right? through their advance and that's all the money they got coming in hey, if you ain't recouping there's no more money to see from your music you know exactly. you, you better recoup so that's what indie's the best, bro. You literally get a good agent, get a good publicist, have a good home, your manager, and I think you're chill. Yeah, I mean, you um, you obviously work closely with the Rolling Loud guys, and yeah. they've been booking you from the jump when they were just dope ENT. Um, what is your relationship like with Tarek and Matt and those guys? Dude, I love Tarek. I love Matt. Matt's like my goddamn dad. You know okay. what I mean? Like, he's like uh a different dimensional dad for me i love kelvin i love everyone from there you get me mm-hmm. they're definitely family i think they're really in tune and hip with the culture and they really know what's going on too like I, I mean they've them. always been that way yeah. right so like they've been throwing the show in florida since, since before rolling loud all the rap shows were like yes, going through uh, everybody them. they were doing everything yeah before rolling loud it was like that was it yeah it was they were doing the whole fucking state Miami, they were kind of the only people bringing like real rap shows to Miami yeah, and Miami, Tampa. Miami, Orlando, Tampa, and yeah. I think Jacksonville too. Yeah. I think they started booking currency too. Like, yeah, that was the, the first, first show artists. they ever did. Yeah, currency. Which is crazy to think. Damn. I'm old, man. But um, you were saying that uh, off the camera, you're, you've are you been doing like some TikToks going to food places. Yeah. Right? But there's kind of a more official play happening with you doing like a, uh, a food type of show with collaborating with rolling loud yeah so me and rolling loud we're doing a food show right so we're going to different cities states whatever we're eating cooking with the chef cooking with the cooks raiding the restaurants talking about its history and all that so it's tight That's like dope. real episodes is it kind of like what action bronson did a bit um uh i would i love bronson hats off to him i love that guy yeah um more like way. a guy fiari diner diving and drives type okay. thing Yo, by the way, shout out to him. He lost a lot of fucking weight, yeah, man. Dude. I you lost some weight? Dude, I was on keto. I was at three, I'm on keto right now. Real? Dude, I was three, That shit works. I was 340. Tell this fucking fat fuck on the couch. <laughs> Bro, I was 340 pounds. I went down to 260. I was wearing an extra large shirt. I fucked it up. I went back to 320. And today, right now, I'm 305. But keto, bro, I was 260 on keto. Bro, this guy did keto for like three days. He's like, bro, I cheated. I'm like, bro, that's not how this works. Bro, I did keto for four months and lost 60 pounds. Wow, cook. Dude, I swear to God, it's super easy, bro. And now... You eat bacon, so much- you can eat cheese, you can eat all kinds of... B- bro, there's tortillas now. That there's are tortillas. Ke- yeah, that are Mr. Tortillas. Tortilla in San Fernando. So one, dude, one that grand per tortilla. Bro, I would... All day, I'm making... You know those uh, Philly cheesesteak meat yum-yums that you buy? like mm-hmm. a th- Dude, I'm making Philly cheesesteak burritos all day. I'm eating like maybe 15 carbs a day. Dude. Yeah, it works, bro. I'm, t- I'm back on it right now. And especially with this food show, like when I'm not doing it, I'm on keto. Bro, I'm I've lost weight, weight. 20 pounds in a month bro, right now. Lit. Like I'm on keto right now. It's this lit. shit is legit. You go to the fucking Costco, they got keto bread. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'd be eating. They got all kinds of keto shit. Bro, even like this. So like I like cooking, right? So I'll make chicken parm, right? Yeah. And you know, chicken parm is breaded. You right. can't have breaded. I'll get pork rinds Ooh. and I'll grind up the pork rinds and I'll put the chicken in the pork rinds because you can eat pork rinds on keto. Wait, so you have pork rind breaded chicken parm. Ooh. It's gas. That sounds fire. It's really fire. I got to tap in. 
You got yo. You should do a keto cookbook. Oh, no, I should have a goddamn book. I was thinking about it because I was thinking about different ways to market my food, our food show. I was like, yo, I definitely want to do a cookbook after. Dude, if you did like a keto, even if you just did keto recipes on your YouTube, because I think like there's not enough of that on YouTube for. You know, a lot of the shit that you see uh, when you go on YouTube for keto shit, it's a lot of just corny motherfuckers. It's like, hey, like, hey guys, what's up? Uh, man, you know how you talked about um, the dark era of rap with yes. SoundCloud? Bro, right now with TikTok. Shout out TikTok. I fuck with them. But all those cooks and food tasters, this is the darkest era because I don't trust 95% of them. And I think all their taste buds are dog shit. Of course they are. You see, like, Jason Derulo goes viral just for just throwing a bunch of shit in a bowl and freezing it. And then I'm like... You're not even eating that. You don't even believe that's good. You're chiseled like a fucking statue. <laughs> you're not eating all that sugar. You f- yeah, Anyway. Yeah. No, you're right about that. Yeah, yeah. So when is the show going to debut? Because you're about to go. You say you're about to do some a bunch of episodes in New York. Yeah. We're about Rolling to be, Loud Weekend. We're about to be in New York and Rolling Loud Weekend. I think the October 24th. Yeah. So we're about to film like, I think like 20 episodes. And then we already have episodes done. Right. We're just waiting to figure out a date to drop it. Is it just going to drop through Rolling Loud or through um, DSP or? It's in the. Sell f- it to Netflix. We're figuring it out right now. There it but is. But definitely when we figure it out where, we'll announce it. Um, talk about your relationship with Peep, man, because I know you guys toured a lot together. I mean, obviously you got the tattoo. I know that it, it hurt you a lot when he passed. Yeah, so that was, how did I meet him? A long time ago, right? So my homie Mikey was my producer, my best friend. Mm-hmm. He played his record in the studio. And he was like, yo, check this guy out. And I was like, ah, show me more. You got me like. But let me get into it So he showed me more And I was like Oh this kid's tight And then I think I had hit him up on Instagram And then We just clicked And I think I came to LA And I met him And then we became friends We went on tour together It was me Peep Smoke Perp And then yeah We just kept connecting ever since Wow The whole time We yeah. met Chilled a few months Went on tour Yeah you guys uh, You know I, th- I think Peep is like One of the I can't even imagine Where he'd be at now <laughs> Peep like, is one of the most And not even saying that Because that's like my yeah. brother I In this generation He is one of the most Influential people Because I think of like 100%. Where a lot of music is gone uh, And That was like the kind of shit He was just already doing Right Yeah 100% Even from big records now From big yeah. art Like It's definitely from Peep Or an influence like He'd people. have been a You know You know I think of like MGK Right And that's my guy But you know MGK is making rock music now Like I'm like man People would have had that whole lane just on lock. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, even like, shout out to Juice World. You know, Juice World did a lot of that kind of shit. And I think Juice World, obviously, rest in peace, a legend. But I definitely think Peep was like ahead of his time. Oh, dude, I, would, I was with Juice because he was living out here and we we're in the studio. And he was like, dude, I love Peep. Yeah. Like, I would listen to Peep all the time. Yeah, no, Peep, I think it, it, it's, it's, you know, it's one of those guys who, before he was even commercially known, like, he had like a cold following and it's like, who would have known what would have happened? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think if he was still alive, 100% one of the biggest artists. Well, I, I do think he's a huge artist, but he would have definitely been like running shit. He would have transcended, yeah, yeah. 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 Into a whole to. different world that uh-huh. he didn't even realize. Hey, what up, man? We got to interrupt the interview real quick to tell you about our family at Odd Socks. Now, when I be riding for Odd Socks so hard, man, it's because I really love the product. They got the most comfortable socks in the fucking world. I got a pair of Odd Socks basics on right now. Go get those. They got the socks. WWE joints, you know what I'm saying? Shout to The Undertaker, Pepsi, motherfucking, really whatever you need. Some weed socks, Nickelodeon. But really, they got the draws now, ladies and gentlemen. I'm holding a, a pair of Tapatio underwear right now. You want some Pop-Tarts on your dick? Pop-Tart draws. And these motherfuckers are so comfortable. Like, man. So listen, you got to go to oddsocksofficial.com. And use the uh, promo code, the discount code BOOTLEGKEV at oddsocksofficial.com. You'll save 20% off underwear, the most comfortable socks in the world, crazy licenses. Not only they got the WWE, they got the Scarface, they got the Street Fighter, they got the Nickelodeon, they got it all. So make sure you hit that website, oddsocksofficial.com. Save 20% off with the promo code BOOTLEGKEV. All right? Go do that. Shout out to Odd Socks. Let's get back to the interview. Are you and Puya still, still, you know, besties? You guys? Yeah, still? we're so bad, dude. I'm with them in LA right now. We're staying at the same Airbnb. That's amazing. <laughs> we're so bad. We met in like eighth grade. We're still super close. You got me. Like, obviously, he had to go do shit for his career. Mm-hmm. I had to go do shit for my career. But yeah, so I think you guys are like, uh, I, I, how you guys haven't done some sort of like reality show or something? Or oh man, so 
Dude, when we first moved There's to LA. There's stuff on YouTube and stuff, but yeah. because yeah. we, we did a Nick and Puya show. Yeah. But when we first moved to LA, maybe like 2017, we were young as shit, or 2016, maybe even younger, I don't know. We were presented a reality show with some major people, but we were like, no, nah, hell no. Yeah, shit. Because they wanted it scripted, you get know I me? Mean? Yeah, like maybe like keeping up with shit. the Kardashian type shit. Like Robin Big. Dude. But they wanted really scripted drama, and Puya was like, eh, sounds kind of corny. Yeah. We would want something that we have more creative control over. Um, do you guys ever? Did you guys ever ever end up uh, following up? Um, the what was the dropout fucking album? Were you guys standing in front of your high school? Drop out of school. Did you guys do a part two for that? Yeah, we dropped it at the beginning of this year. Um, like what? What is like? You, you know, when it comes to you guys making joint albums, you guys kind of stylistically share a lot of traits, but as rappers, you guys are very different, right? So like when you guys work together on music for a project like one of those, like what, how do you approach it differently? Cause your shit is very like you guys meet in the middle. I think a lot, but you guys stylistically, Oh, it's very different. You know what I mean? Very like, different. like his new album, like it's all like instruments. Like he's actually like rapping, rapping. Like we make very different music. So right? how's the compromise when you guys come together? Dude, honestly, <laughs> we'll just be in the studio and people like, oh, show me what the fuck you're doing. So I show you like, this, 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 and that. You get me? And that's it. Yeah, literally, that's it. Like, I don't try to rap any other way. He didn't rap, try to rap any other way. Like, I'll usually pick the beat mm. and write something, and he'll be like, I like this, I don't like this, and then we'll go from there. I just saw you posted on IG uh, the first artist signed to your, 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 you have a label. Yeah. What's we your, both have separate labels. Okay, what's your label called? Young Rich and Handsome Entertainment. Is that what? There you go, YRH. Yeah. I always thought that meant young, rich, Hispanic. Because <laughs> you know what the Migo shit means? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm an idiot, clearly. Uh, well, but, uh, I'm Hispanic. Shout out to uh, all the Peruvians and everyone else out here. Um, yeah, I saw you just sign an artist, but um, the, 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 kid, the Tay-K kid was supposed to sign with you, right? So the whole story with that, right, is I met Tay-K through... Puya's DJ, Marcus, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, yo, there's this artist from Texas, blase, blase, he's lit. Puts me in contact with him, I fuck with him. He shows me a video, so I'm like, yo, you're hot. Like, this shit's hot, bro. Like, I know my shit. I've called out multiple fucking artists. So he had gone somewhere. I didn't know he was on the run. I didn't know shit. Mm. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to sign you, blah, blah. And literally, he called me a few days. He's like, yo, I'm going to come to Miami. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll buy your ticket. Let me know. He's somewhere up north or some shit. So the day before I buy his ticket, Literally, he gets picked up by, I think it was the, the U.S. Marshals or some shit. Yeah, and then someone from his camp sends me the video. He's like, yo, Take it once you drop this video. And that's how the race ended up on my YouTube. But Take it was going to come to Miami, and I was going to sign Take it. Not to, not to some fuck shit, just like part of Buffet Boys. You get me? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's a crazy story, man. So that's how that ended up on your YouTube page. Yeah. Had, did you ever actually meet him in person? Never. Wow. When, when he was going to fly to Miami and I was going to meet him, he got picked up by the Marshals. Wow, and then you upload the video. The video goes fucking crazy. Yeah. Do you guys, do you guys still talk? I haven't talked to him in so long. Yeah, that's not not because of my choice, right? Just because other people like. Well, plus it's not like you guys were like super close. Yeah, yeah. Well, so with the but yo the buffet boy shit is so fire to me. I mean the merch. Every, I mean, Thank you. is that something that? Um, I mean, are you still pushing the line on the buffet buffet boy shit? Yeah, we still do it. You got me like well, how, like. I mainly focus on my merch. Pui mainly focuses on his merch. Mm -hmm. But every other month we do drop the Fayboy's merch and then we just flip it from there. What What, what is, uh you You said you, you spent most of the pandemic in the strip club because yeah. you live in Florida. Yeah, Florida. It's a good place to live. Best state. Best state to live during the pandemic for sure. You know what? I've, I've traveled the world like two times. Maybe I'm going to sound biased, but I love Florida. Oh, I love it too. But definitely South Florida is way more lit than like trust me <laughs> yes the only thing about south florida is just that man i got off that plane a couple of weeks ago and that humidity it hit you in the throat you yeah know? it sucks the humidity there's the ass but oh, outside shit. of that it's i think i mean i mean it might be underwater in like 30 years ah, but okay. you know they've been saying that since i was like a kid yeah that's fair but um super lit definitely in the strip club eating chicken sliders eating wings whole pandemic did you get have you had covid i got it once that i i literally got so i had a china tour mm-hmm when was COVID? 2020, right? March yeah, 2020? March 2020, yep. I was in China October 30th, 2019. So you was out there. I was out was there. Was you when, in Wuhan? Was, I, I, was, no, I was in Shanghai, Chengdu, 
um, and like two other cities. You'd be touring around. some random countries. You've done Russia before, right? Yeah, I would, every time I go to Europe, we go to Russia. I have a really big following. In Russia. Yeah, you got a wild following and some wild platform. Like this motherfucker's in Russia. It's lit. So you say you've been all over the world, but like, uh, how was how was it being in China? Because in China, they knew that this shit was going on, and at the end of the year, at least. Was there any sort of awareness about there being a the COVID shit going on? Dude, no one told me shit. Wow. <laughs> no one told me anything. I didn't know shit. And then when I came back, maybe like two, three months after that, I had COVID. Oh, you had it. Yeah, so you had it like at the beginning. Yeah, I was chill. Though. I just lost my my scent, my scent, and my taste for like a week and a half. I mean, you're a bigger dude too, so yeah. that had to be you know scary. They say you get even bigger, it's harder. You know, uh, I got a tough immune system. I mean, clearly all the shit you put in your body. Yeah, it's like, dude, if that didn't take me down, I'm good. Are you vaccinated? I don't know. <laughs> oh man, I, I don't. I'm not. I, I'm still figuring it out. You get me? So not, <laughs> not yet. Yeah, not yet. It's so weird, right? It's like someone asked you that, you're like, I don't want to say the wrong thing because I don't. Uh, you can't talk about it because no matter what you say, yes or you say no, you're in the wrong. Yeah. I mean, I got I got the jab, but I think what's going on right now is crazy. Like people getting shamed for not wanting to push it in their own body. Dude, honestly, this is my thing, right? Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, hundred mm-hmm. percent, and nobody's wrong with their opinion. But be courteous to other people. So if you don't want to get vaccinated, wear your mask and be courteous to those people who want it, and vice versa. Uh-huh. Don't shame someone for not wearing it. It has to be a mutual agreement. I mean, just be courteous to everyone around you. Just be nice, man. Be polite. Yeah. Motherfuckers are so like, just because we don't agree on everything, don't make make us enemies. It's so wild, bro. Like, especially living here, and I'm vaccinated, but Jesus Christ, motherfucker, <laughs> L.A. It's just these California people are so sensitive. They're so f- they all got sticks up their ass. Pause. You know what oh, I'm saying? Man. I, I, it's not just California because definitely there's people like that in Florida. Well, too. You go to San Francisco and then you can't even go to a fucking restaurant without the vaccine. Yeah. Oh man, it's definitely different different times living in. I don't know how more people just don't have fake vaccine cards. There's literally nothing to a vaccine card. <laughs> it's literally a fucking piece of plain cardboard. Like, make your own. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, but then again, if you get caught with the fake yeah, one, fucked. they put you in fucking jail, which is also crazy. Yeah. I don't know. That shit's crazy. Has that kind of like uh, impeded any of your traveling or any of your show shit? Um, no. I mean,. My Europe situation, but that's just because like COVID keeps going like up and down apparently from what my booking agent told me. Mm. So just my Europe tour. What has been um, your craziest live show experience or your craziest like groupie experience you've had overseas? Uh, definitely no groupie experience because I'm I'm a wholesome person. But I'm, maybe a wild fan. Maybe oh, uh, are mean, you still dating the Le- Le- LeBron chick? No, okay, that was a while ago. I uh, broke up with her. Okay, okay, she sucks. Oh, fuck dog her. Shit. Fuck that bitch. Yeah, anyway. she's dog shit. Dog shit. <laughs> um, crazy. Probably like Russia, bro. Like literally. Okay, so here I'll travel for tour, right? Like we'll fly, we'll do all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. But like when I'm flying in Russia or anywhere in Europe, I won't tell anyone my schedule. You just know where I'm going from the date in my tour flyer. Mm. So like literally, like we'll pull up to every city on flight, and bro, like 200 people at the gate. Waiting And they don't even know Your flight schedule Wow yeah, I definitely think that Europe Nothing America appreciates music Right But Europe appreciates A little more Because we're not able To go there all the time You ever Like Russia's a fucking Scary place I love Russia But like Have you gone there And like Maybe Like I'd be so afraid To get in trouble in Russia bro Oh I'm, I'm scared To get anywhere in trouble In Europe I feel like I'm fucked Cause that motherfucker Putin is a wild boy Oh man He's lit Yeah No it's crazy And then these, these Most of these kids Don't need to speak they don't speak English, most you, of them. You know, a lot of my fans or supporters in, in, in Europe and everywhere, they can, it's broken. But they get But they can hold a they, convo with you and they know your music. You, I mean, mm. it's not perfect, right? But it's, you can you can go through with them. Have you been to any uh, brothels in Europe? Oh, man. Shit. Actually, yeah, I have. <laughs> nice. In Russia. In So Russian brothels. Yeah, it's lit. What are those like? Dude, so check this story out. So literally after my festival, this was um, dude, like maybe like four years ago or three mm-hmm. years ago. I tell my uh, the festival owner, I want to go to the best strip club in Russia. In Mo- we're in Moscow, cool. So he's like, I'm gonna take you. We get somewhere, bro. It's like, bro, like the sketchiest outside looking place I've ever seen in my life. But there's like ten Rolls Royce outside. So I'm like, oh shit. 
Like they're like 10 double R outside, it's sketchy. You walk inside, bro, like just two big Russian guys like this <sighs> patting you down. And there's an elevator. But the elevator, you can only go up one by one. Oh. Weird. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm with two festival owners and two homies I have. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, one of you festival owners go up first and I'll go after. So literally one by one going upstairs. So we go upstairs and I was like, yeah, I want to go to a strip club. But just a bunch of girls in like martini dresses like and some weird shit. And, and they're holding numbers <laughs> on top of their goddamn thing because they're playing some game. I don't fucking know. It was really fucking weird. But after everything, they sit down, whorehouse. Wow. Yeah. Wait, so the girls weren't holding the numbers so you could be like, I want number two. They were no, no, they were holding numbers because they were playing some game with the DJ. But I didn't understand the fucking game because I don't speak Russian. Did it feel like something like, you know, you see these like action movies like Triple X or something and there's always like an, it's like, did it feel like some like real sketchy like movie type shit? Oh no, the minute the minute we got inside, the outside looked sketchy, but the minute we got inside, lit. Not sketchy at all. Like everyone was having fun. It was all lit. What did the girl go for that you? Uh, what was the what was the going rate in Russia? The going rate? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, what was it? <laughs> I think like two hundred bucks. Right? Uh, yeah, like two fifty. Two like fifty. Yeah. Two fifty USD. Yeah, USDs. Wow, how many did you grab? Uh, just one. Just one? Yeah. Was it was it was it worth the two fifty? Dude, yeah, hundred percent. She was bad. We're still friends. You're friends with yeah, the Russian cool. whore. Yeah. Nice. When you say still friends, what's that mean? Oh, like you know, it's like she'll write on the Instagram picture, like, oh hey, how you doing? Like she was cool. You got to have a special kind of uh, female fan that, like, you know, that. Uh, listen, man. I know I've been to your show. Like I've been to a couple of your 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 shows in smaller venues. You got some pretty wild ass fans that are like, I'm assuming down for a lot of shit with you. You know what I'm saying? Oh uh, yeah. You know what? Um, I have a motto. I can't do anything with fans. So you do you don't fuck fans. I can't. That's a good rule. Things get weird, right? Um, a lot of things. Things get weird. Um, I feel like you also when you do that, you like. Okay, when someone's a fan of you, they're a fan of everything. Mm. The, the mystery behind you, this, this, this. I feel like when you do that, it goes away. It's done. They're not. It's they're like, not oh, a fan anymore. Yeah. Hi, I've already fucked them. Yeah, I can't. That's how, actually makes sense. I don't like it. I like girls who like literally don't know who I am or don't really know. You get me? Like some weird shit. Mm. Like you don't know who the fuck I am. Always you're gonna find out when you follow like me. Like a Russian shit. prostitute. Yeah, it's cool. Business nice, and then after we just watch TV and eat Uber Eats. So, you let me so you go to this Russian place, they get them playing the game, and it's just a it's a it's a bunch of girls in martini dresses, dude. I swear to god. And then they're playing some game, I don't know what the fuck they're playing. Then everyone's just mingling, right? But we're in a section, yeah. And then they just start coming up to us, they're like, Oh, where are you from? blah blah blah, like your chain, like this, and then yeah. And then you just pick your chick, and then they take you to a room. No, I went back to my hotel. Oh, you took her to the hotel. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I didn't know they didn't have bedding there. I, they might have, but I was yeah. like, ugh, I don't trust it. I feel I you. Like you might catch place. bed bugs or something else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you ever had an STD? Never. Never. I'm clean like a whistle. Good for Always you. Always been clean. Good for you. You ever had STD? Of course. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm clean. I'm I had a um, gonorrhea. Oh shit. Yeah. Curable. Yeah. Shot a penicillin up the ass. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> 72 hours Good Cleared up right? Back on the scene Back on the scene Never happened Back in the mix Never happened Yeah nah yeah That's hey man Shout out to you man You know for Your persona you, You're a pretty responsible guy All things considered Yeah you have to be responsible You got a lot of I mean look For all the guns And the drugs And the shit You'd be posting in your life You know what well, I'm saying Well shout out Florida Where all my guns are good Yes 100%. All your guns are legal 100% Out here it's a problem Yeah I can't have that here Yeah you got some like Serious guns How many guns you own Mm, I don't know, twenty and up probably. Wow, but every it's Florida, everything's legal. Like yeah. I have my conceal, I have everything. I can walk around everywhere with it. What's the most expensive gun you own? Um, the most expensive gun I own, like the prize possession in the collection. Um, I, I what the fuck? I think we. I have a TP nine that's like maybe we're like twenty six hundred. Oh wow. That's not that pricey, but it's nice. I have some cool guns. I have a Cobra Mac 11 factory baby blue gun. It costs me like 1600 Wow. It's like a Mac 11, but like factory baby blue. You being in Florida as long as you've been, have you ever made it over to Mike Busey's house? No, but I've definitely been invited a bunch of times. It's a wild but place. He lives, in like, he lives in Orlando. Yeah, like middle Florida. Yeah, it's it's uh, called the Sausage Castle. You know, there's a place in Florida called the Sausage Castle. The homie Mike Busey owns it. I haven't been to the new house, but the old house 
was like insane. I never been. Was, we we're supposed to, but we had to go there back. There was to fucking Miami. pigs and glory holes and fucking alligators and machine guns and strippers. The and ultimate bro house. It no, but it was like, you know, like if you ever been to a, have you ever like been to an insane clown posse concert? Never. Yeah, unfortunately, I have. And, um, <laughs> it was like uh, the Juggalo version of like the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> Oh, was, even the girls that was in there were like, Meh. they were cool. Like, you know, if you're into like, you know, white chicks who smoke Marlboros, you know oh, what I'm no, saying? That's not me. Yeah, not, Can't you know, do it. yeah, but it was just a wild place. You got to, yo, know, shout out to Mike Busey, great guy. He just hit me up. Uh, he does, he does on Veterans Day. <laughs> He's got this lady who comes to the fucking sausage castle and it's open invite to anyone who's ever been in the military. And on Veterans Day, this lady literally stays at Mike Busey's house all fucking day and she sucks everyone's dick. So if you're a veteran, you go to Mike Busey's house on Veterans Day, you get a blowjob to completion. Now, mind you, there's like a hundred dudes standing around in his living room getting their cock sucked by this fucking chick. I think her name's like something jizz. I don't know. Not a looker, obviously. But with that being said, shout out to the veterans. Shout, this is only in Florida. That's These are crazy. Florida things. Yeah, hey, that's where Florida's awesome. You can go get, go get your dick sucked. You can go eat wings at a strip club. And you can and shoot a machine gun. You can shoot a machine. You can do anything. You literally can do anything. You can go for. wrestle a crocodile if you want. Yeah. Or alligator. I forgot which one we have. I think it's alligators. Yeah, some shit. I'm, maybe both. Yeah. You can go wrestle one if you want. Do whatever the fuck you want in Florida. Yeah, yeah. It's cr- and then iguanas are everywhere. Hey, South go Florida. get gonorrhea and get a penicillin shot. You're good. Oh. Yeah, I don't. I'm, I'm not, not no more. I'm married now. Shout out to my wife. <laughs> Shout out to my wife. Um, what part of Florida do you actually live in? Miami. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Miami's great, man. Born and raised. Dead. What, what is the best strip club, in your opinion, in Miami? Oh, uh, man. Honestly, it's changed over the years. But r- at this very moment, I have to give it to Gold Rush. Gold Rush. Gold Rush Cabaret. Where's that at? Um, Where the hell is it? It's like... Um, it's like... Almost downtown, more like toward like the little Haiti area, but mm. not in Little Haiti. I think I could be fucking up. I could be retarded. You know, like the big ones we always hear about Tootsie's, obviously Booby Trap, Eleven. Eleven's not really a strip club. I like Eleven a lot, but I don't consider Eleven a strip club it's like not. everyone else. It's like a mega club. Even though Gold Rush and Eleven's like by the same people, right? Mm. It's literally the same people, but I think Gold Rush is super lit and they have awesome food. Eleven's like a mega club where girls happen to be stripping. Yeah, it's lit. It's like Vegas, and I love Booby Trap on the river, right? But it's like it's like been like bad recently. Oh, it's been bad? Yeah, like, dude, like, who was it? I think it was online, like, Zoe Dollars, like, shout out him. I think he got, like, shot outside of it. Oh, shit. Yeah, it was all over Twitter. Shout out Zoe Dollars, man. Very uh, un- underappreciated South Florida, Florida yeah, figure. Yeah, I, I respect him. Hats off to him. He's killing it. He got his bulletproof vehicle business going yeah, crazy. Yeah, a, a fucking Haitian hibachi truck, too. Oh, really? Yeah, he just opened it. I haven't been there, but I saw him post about Have it. Have you been doing any sort of like investments, like with some of the money you got? So me and my homie Mikey, we just opened up a cookie company. It's called Nikki Gordo Sweet Treats. Fire. So every month we do cookie drops, and we just bought a space that we're about to open up to the public. Ooh, in South Florida? In Miami. By That's downtown. crazy. I like that name. It's like you guys are doing cookie drops like the fucking Supreme. Dude, I swear they sell it like Supreme every month. Wow. Down for the weekend sold out. And we only do it once a month. Every month we do new flavors. How's like, like, um, you know, not being able to maybe tour like you were before because of the pandemic. Are, I mean, I know you're doing all the rolling louds, but are you also going to be hitting the road solo again? Yeah. So I'm dropping my, my mixtape November 5th, mm-hmm. Gorgeous Busy Gordo. And then I'm going to plan a tour around that. Nice. Yeah, your shows are crazy, man. That's tight. Yeah. Well, listen, man, uh, that, well, you, you have some, you have a lot of music out right now. Yeah. You'll be at rolling loud in New York and LA, right? Yeah. But New York and LA. Do you just have the Rolling Loud pass now? Um, I wouldn't say pass. Like, have you I, ever not been at on Rolling Loud? I've definitely not been at a few of them. Which one? Um, not the one that just happened or the one before, but the one before that in Miami. You weren't on the Miami show? One of them, but it's because I played one like back to back to back. Oh, yeah. about to say, bro, you got like the... I DJed at the second Rolling Loud. That's where I'm, Is that where I met you or am I tripping? I think I met you before that. Oh. I think the first time I met you was in Tampa. But yeah, the second one was the f- one where you realize like, oh shit, that was the one that was Future and Wayne. Yeah, and it was in Winwood, and it was like, oh shit, I remember Winwood one. And it was like, yo, this is this might be special. The first one was kind of random because it was raining and shit. Yeah, and I think Schoolboy Q was the headliner. It, it, was it? I th- 
Was Bronson the headlining or Richard? Schoolboy Q was on the show. Juicy J. Juicy J was on the yeah, show. Bronson was there. And then the second one was like Future and Wayne. And it was like, oh, this shit is like, this ain't, ain't no joke. And then I think after the third one, it was just like, oh, this is the illish shit. This is the illish shit in rap. Because at the time, there was no, um, you know, we used to have Rock the Bells, which was a festival in LA. But it's nothing like But it was this. nothing like no Rolling offense. Loud. No, not at all. Yeah. It's like crazy. So shout out to those guys, man. And shout out to you. You got the, you got the, uh, what's the pass called at Rolling Loud? The fuck you pass? <laughs> I don't have that yet. That fuck you pass is fire. I need it. It's just. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> well, look, man, I uh, appreciate you uh, for, for pulling up and looking forward to the TV shit. Anything else you want to plug? Go get your, go, how can they find the fucking cookies? Oh, Nikki Gordon Sweet Treats. It'll be on my Instagram, The Real Fan Nick. I'll drop it once a month. My mixtape drops November 5th. Stay clean. Stay clean. Stay off the shits. Stay off the shits and go to strip clubs and be safe. Yes. Get on that keto, cook. Oh, yeah, keto it too. This fucking guy. <laughs>